Hey everybody, how's it going? Tonight we're going to do a, a nice little quick tip on Orca. So this is a, about a default feature that is turned on that may be causing some issues related to stringing uh, and fuzzies and zits and blobs. This is not an Orca specific problem because um, this could be a default feature that, that is turned on with other slicers like Kira and SRD. It's certainly a feature that's found in all of them. But Z-Hop is something that is, is, is a pretty common feature across all, if not most, if not all, slicers. Um, but what I noticed is, is that it is turned on by default in, in Orca. So where Z-Hop is turned on is when you, when you develop or when you import your, your printer profile, if you click on the presets here and you're on the extruder tab, the Z-Hop window tracking by default is turned on. So in my case, it was set to 0.4 millimeters, about the... The, the diameter of the stock nozzle that's in the profile. Now, obviously, I, I put with the 0.6. Um, but in general, I have Z-Hop turned off. I, I turn Z-Hop on if I have top surfaces that I want to protect, right, to, from that scarring. Um, or if you have, like, something that's got really small features and you're moving, you're jumping and jumping from spot to spot, and you want to make sure you're not knocking into parts or features as the thing's moving around, those are great opportunities to employ Z-Hop to make sure that your part's good. The, the, the side effect is that you've got, like, if you imagine, a, you know, some chewed bubble gum in this hand and the nozzle stops and you lift up, well, you're going to pull a little bit of string of filament, you're going to move it over to the next spot in your part, and you're potentially going to deposit that string in multiple occasions across, and that's where you get, like, fuzzies and you get stringing and you got some post-processing you got to take care of. So, you need to be selective uh, when you choose to use Z-Hop and choose it, you know, the right tool for the right job type of thing. So in this case, for this part, I did not need it, so I basically just changed it to zero. There is this Z-Hop type down here, and we'll go into that in just a second. Um, and then as we do that and we hit slice again, you can see there's still all the travel moves in here that are coming up. And this is where I was getting a bunch of stringing. I stupidly thought it was something wrong with my, uh, with my filament. I had been printing with the same roll of filament time and time and time again, and all of a sudden I got a bunch of stringing and I was like, what the hell's going on? I haven't done anything different. Well, I changed slicers. I changed slicers right in the middle of it, and this thing was turned on by default. So the rest of the part was great. Uh, once I made that change, uh, this is, it's completely clean. No, no nothing. Um, and I, so that particular spot, if you are having some issues with some additional stringing or maybe you're scratching your head around a little bit, um, go check that, that, that preset in your machine up here under the extruder tab and turn that off. Now, if you're running into a scenario where you have to have Z-Hop turned on, so you have a part with thin features that are sticking up off the bed, something like you're printing a hand, and you've got to print something and move, print something and move, and you don't want to print straight across and potentially you know, the nozzle knock into something because of, of some warping or something that might be happening with the print and knock something over and have a failure, then you can turn it back on. What I would suggest then is that there are a couple of different Z-Hop types in here that you can actually employ to help reduce the amount of stringing that happens. So slope and spiral are two of those options. So in slope, it's happening just as it, so it's going to Z-Hop up and it's going to move up and over and out of the way. And it's going to try and do that quickly to snap that filament and not go up and over and then deposit. It's gonna come up and out and try and snap it. Same with the spiral, where it actually is coming up and is making a circular motion, moving over, dropping down. So in that circular motion and that spiral motion, that's what it's trying to do is actually snap that filament and move over. So it helps keep the print a bit cleaner. It probably won't, I don't know that it'll get rid of all of it, but that's what those two options are. So in my case, for this particular part, I'm choosing normal and then zero and my problem goes away. Now, if I'm gonna run this other project, um, there are a couple things that I'm gonna do. So if I'm gonna say go recent, I'm actually gonna pull on the spiral. Um, no, I do not wanna save, I wanna discard all that. So this particular spiral I'm printing, um, I'm printing this out of PETG. Um, oh, go back. I'm printing this out of PETG, it's extremely thin. I don't have much surface area holding this thing down. And I definitely, because it's PETG, I want to um, avoid crossing walls. So I want to keep the nozzle inside the printed part to avoid a whole bunch of stringing with PETG. And as it's printing this, though, um, it gets out here to, if we go ahead and slice this plate, just to give some example, one Z-Hop's a good idea. <clears throat> it is making this constant spiral motion up, right? And so as it comes to 
as it moves around and it comes to this end, it actually overshoots a little bit, makes it move to the you know left or right, comes back, and and in you know Pet G has a little bit of warp it shoot everyone wants, so the nozzle can knock that and potentially knock this whole part off the build plate because I have such small surface area down here. So I've tackled that with a brim, of course, to try and give it some extra support. But in this case, this would be a time when it's okay to go ahead and turn on Z-Hop uh, in this case, even if it's just that amount. So, um, I would, and I would probably do a slope or a spiral in that case to try and reduce the amount of fuzzy that's going to happen. But because I'm choosing to print inside the already printed part, keep the nozzle there, uh, I'm still going to have uh, less stringing than if it were just traveling straight across. So there you go. There's a couple of options for you. I hope this is helpful. Um, like and subscribe. Um, drop a comment. I appreciate it. Thanks all.